This rather chunky device is a Meanwell surge protection device. It's designed to be used with Meanwell LED power supplies in signage so that if there's a lightning strike or that voltage transit in the vicinity, it will clamp those spikes. And it's quite interesting that the data sheet has a, a full schematic of the inside of this, which is maybe just as well, because if I pop the lid off this, it doesn't reveal an awful lot. If I can get the lid off, it's very, very tightly snapped in. But it reveals that uh, the interior of this, that is so tight. Yeah, that is very tight. Yeah. It is potted in resin. This is not good, but I'm going to see if I can break into that. Uh, I don't really have the tools needed to do a super deep investigation, but I'd like to break into it and roughly see if I can find much. But there are two LEDs, a green one here and a green one here, used for fault diagnostic purposes. If they're both lit, uh, it means it's working, I think. And if any of them goes out, it means that you have to change the unit. But I shall uh, open this. I'll take it into work, I'll open it, and we'll see what's inside. One moment, please. Well, that was not easy, but I did manage to break my way into the unit and made a huge mess of the process. It had a layer of resin, approximately the thickness of this pen, which is about 10 millimeter, uh, 3 eighths of an inch. And below that was a very coarse, almost like quartz sand, very, uh, very white and coarse. And that's blended. There's some of it left where it had been permeated into the resin. And the construction of the unit was such that they had this plastic housing that they had placed into the empty case. And then they'd sat these in. And each of these is a metal oxidizer with a thermal fuse actually integrated into the same package. More on that later. So they dropped these in like this. And they have three wires coming out. And the construction was such that the wires come in to the case from the side. Let me zoom down this a little bit. The wires coming in from the side, there was no circuit board. They were uh, terminated and tinned. And then th this assembly here literally had the wires bent over onto these, wire these uh, large wires coming in. It's very robust, no circuit board, which would be a weakness in this case. Uh, so it's good solid electrical connections. And the LED on each side simply has a fairly high power, 1 watt, 39K resistor, a 1N4007 diode, and a traditional green gallium phosphide uh, LED. And that, also there's no circuit board, they've literally pressed the LED into the casing and then just taken the wires over with a bit of sleeving and tacked them onto the relevant connections. Let's take a closer look at one of these. I also got a little extra bit of video at work, which is super interesting. Let's make sure this isn't focus. So here is the complete module, and it's a distinct hump on one side, which uh, contains the uh, thermal fuse. The thermal fuse is a ceramic package with two solid wires going in, uh, and I, I made a, I'll show you a representation of that. Then I'll show you it tripping, because we did that. Uh, but this is uh, the metal of resistors put in with the thermal fuse connected onto its tab, and then the whole lot is potted with this very hard white resin. Um, not much else to say in that. Let me show you a representation of the thermal fuse. So the thermal fuse is a ceramic package. It has very stiff wires. Everything's very heavy. I mean, seriously, this is a proper industrial component. But then it's got a sort of low melting point alloy, like solder, bridging from side to side. And there was a sort of crystalline sub, sub substance surrounding that. And I thought maybe that's going to absorb the solder. Well, no, it turns out it was flux. And when I heated this up, um, the flux melted and the solder just sucked onto the sides. Let me show you what that looked like. And then try, while well, look at the camera, to actually... One moment, please. Yeah. Put that on there. Oh, it is. It's all just fizzling in. It's all... That's kind of broken. Oh, I didn't realise that was liquid. Is that flux, then? It's basically... Oh, it has. It's just gone right in. Oh, that was useful. That was worth doing. So now we've seen that going, 
let's take a look at the schematic. And fortunately, meanwhile, being a professional company, I mean, they're really one of the highest profile names in power supplies. And for that reason, this, this surge suppressor, I like rate it very, very highly. It's got some odd symbols in it. It's, these are metal oxide resistors and these are thermal fuses. The ZNR uh, is a kind of old-fashioned name. I think it's Panasonic came out with that. Zinc Oxide Non-Linear Resistor, otherwise known as MOVs, Metal Oxide Resistors, um, or VDRs, Voltage Dependent Resistors. So each of those packages there has the thermal fuse and the metal oxide resistor, and there's one basically bridging from neutral to live, neutral to earth, and live to earth, so they're all uh, avenues are covered, so to speak, for the transients. The LED indicators are based on the 1N4007 diode, the gallium phosphide green LED, that's kind of important, and the 39K resistor. The gallium phosphide LEDs are the sort of dull, old-fashioned green LEDs. The main advantage over gallium nitride is that uh, gallium nitride, the, the reverse leakage, well, they're unreliable, basically, and the reverse leakage from this diode might not be... Uh, enough to actually protect the gallium nitride LED. They hate being reverse biased and they potentially fail. So they've used an old-fashioned uh, gallium phosphide green LED simply for reliability. And the way they've got it configured is if this fuse blows, uh, then that will break the current path between the neutral and live through that LED and that LED will go out. And the diagnostics for this indication in this unit are check if both green LEDs are lit. If they're not lit... Uh, or just one of them has gone out, then part of your protection has failed. One of the thermal fuses is gone, and it means it's time to replace the unit. This other LED down here is effectively in series with this thermal fuse from live, and uh, this thermal fuse from the neutral. So if either of these thermal fuses goes, this LED will go out. So that's those two LEDs cover uh, all three of the fuses. Uh, the modules, the little black modules, these, have text on them. It's very light coloured text, so I wrote it down here. It's SET, possibly the brand, TFMOV 25D471. That probably means thermal fuse, metal oxide varistor, 25mm diameter disc, and 471 means 47, and 1 is a multiplier, so that's 470 volt, which is the point it will start conducting slightly. It also says MCOV, not quite sure what that means, 300 volts AC, that's its rated continuous voltage without actually starting to shunt. Um, and that is it. I am very, very impressed by that unit. Uh, the internal construction was extremely good. That's pretty much what I'd expect of um, a Meanwell product. So, big chunky components, the equivalent generic company component <coughs> unit would have much smaller metal oxide resistors. Um, the Resistor here would have been much smaller. The LED would have just glowed faintly. Um, and also this resistor would have been under stress. This is, I'm talking about other people's products here, but not Meanwell. The Meanwell unit is one that's not just for protecting their power supplies and LED drivers. That would make a very useful addition to protecting stuff like HVAC equipment or other electronically controlled equipment that you wanted that layer of extra protection for in a nice, robust, waterproof package. Top marks to Meanwell. That's an excellent unit.